the Eurasian Steppe. It's a huge grassland that stretches 5,000 miles. The western end of it is known as the Pontic Steppe. And the Pontic Steppe is well known because of the cultures that lived here during the Enuolithic era. You guys are probably familiar with them. The Yamnaya culture, the Havalans culture, the Serdnistog culture. It is believed that the Indo-European languages, the biggest language family spoken in the world today, originated in one of these cultures that lived here during the Enuolithic era. Most people think that it was specifically the Yamnaya culture. But I actually disagree with this consensus. I think that it was the Serdnistog culture who were the Proto-Indo-Europeans. But anyways, that's a topic for another video. In this video, I am going to be looking at ancient DNA from the Pontic Steppe, but not from any of those Enuolithic era cultures who are candidates for being the Proto-Indo-Europeans. I'm going to be looking at ancient DNA from people who lived here during the Neolithic era, which is the era that preceded those cultures, which preceded the Enuolithic era. The Neolithic era ran from 5500 until 4500 BC. And then in 4500 BC, it was succeeded by the Enuolithic era. And the ancient DNA I'm going to be looking at from the Neolithic era in the Pontic Steppe, it comes from three sites. These three sites that you see on the screen here. And each one of these sites are along three different rivers that run through the Pontic Steppe. One site is along the Dnieper River, one is along the Don River, and one is along the Volga River. Now, these three sites, they all date to around circa 5400 BC. This makes this Neolithic Pontic Steppe ancient DNA 2,000 years older than the Yamnaya culture, who most people think were the Proto-Indo-Europeans, and 1,000 years older than the Havalans and certain Stog cultures. Now, let's look at their DNA. Let's look at the Neolithic Steppe DNA and see how they compare to the later Enolithic populations of the steppe. The first thing to discuss is that CHG ancestry was present in the steppe during the Neolithic era, just as it was later during the Enolithic era. Some of you may be wondering, what is CHG? CHG is an acronym which stands for Caucasus Hunter-Gatherer. Basically, it is ancestry from the Caucasus Mountains, specifically from hunter-gatherers who lived there during the Mesolithic era, which is why it's called Caucasus Hunter-Gatherer. The Caucasus Mountains, uh, by the way, are located right here. They are directly south of the Pontic Steppe. And th these, the CHE ancestry it doesn't come from people who literally lived inside of the mountains. I don't know if anybody literally lives inside of the Caucasus Mountains. It comes from people who live just on the south of it. And technically, this is in the Middle East, in southwestern Asia. So it's important to also think of it as a type of uh, Middle Eastern ancestry. At some point in the past... Uh, these CHG hunter-gatherers jumped over the mountains into the steppe, which is why ancient steppe people have ancestry from here. All, every single Enolithic era DNA sample that we have from the steppe has a significant amount of CHG ancestry. Uh, the Enolithic site called the Piedmont, which is not assigned to a specific culture, had 50%. That's, they had the highest amount. The Havalans culture had 25%, the Cernistal culture had 25%, and the Yamnaya culture had 36% CHG ancestry. And while this same CHG ancestry is also present in some of the older Neolithic samples from the steppe, the uh, Neolithic site at the Don River had 30% CHG ancestry, which is totally within the range of what later Neolithic populations had. However, the Neolithic sites along the Dnieper and Volga rivers had none. They had no CHG ancestry, which is unlike any of the later Neolithic populations in the steppe. There were no uh, Neolithic populations on the steppe who did not have no C uh, no CHG ancestry at all. Uh, so what this means is CHG ancestry did exist in the steppe during the Neolithic period, but it was not yet universal like it was during the Enolithic period. It did not exist. It had. It did not yet exist in every single population in every single location of the steppe. But it was present there in the Neolithic period, and this matters. This is the actually the main reason I made this video was simply just to inform those of you who study this topic that. CHG ancestry was in the steppe in the Neolithic period. Most people who study this topic area, including most scientists at the Harvard lab, are not aware of this. They're not aware that CHG ancestry was present in the steppe this early. Uh, what most people believe, including most people at the Harvard lab, is that this type of an this CHG ancestry left the Caucasus Mountains and arrived in the steppe in the Enolithic period in 4500 BC and didn't exist before then. So I made this video to inform you guys that no, CHG ancestry arrived in the steppe earlier than that. It, it's, it's present in Neolithic samples from the Don River dating 5300 BC. So we know for a fact that it arrived earlier than the Enolithic. Um, and it may actually have arrived even earlier than that. CHG ancestry may have arrived in the steppe as early as the Mesolithic period, like in 8000 BC. 
we're going to need uh, mesolithic DNA samples from the step to know whether it arrived that early, but it certainly arrived earlier than the Harvard lab believes it did. Now, you might be thinking, why did I, why does this matter? Why did I make this video to inform you of this? It's because this pertains to the biggest language family in the world, the Indo-European languages. The Harvard lab, they claim that the Indo-European languages come from the CHG people from the Caucasus who migrated into the steppe. They made an entire paper in 2021 claiming this and are convincing many people in the public of this. But since this CHG ancestry is older than the Harvard lab believes it is, this is basically impossible. Indo-European languages cannot be from these CHG Caucasus people since they arrived in the steppe so long ago, at least by 5300 BC and possibly as far back as the Mesolithic period. If they arrived in the Mesolithic period, there's absolutely no way that Indo-European languages come from them. The next thing to discuss is the EHG ancestry and the Neolithic steppe. EHG stands for Eastern European hunter-gatherer. It is ancestry from hunter-gatherers of the Mesolithic era who lived in Eastern Europe. Just how CHG is ancestry from Mesolithic hunter-gatherers who lived in the Caucasus Mountains. So uh, this EHG-CHG ancestry that I'm talking about, this is, based, the way to look at, at it is this is who the ancestors of steppe people were in the Mesolithic era. The Mesolithic period, by the way, was the period that preceded the Neolithic. So it's the period before when these people lived. Also, the Pontic Steppe, if you don't know, it is located in Eastern Europe. So EHG is basically steppe people's native ancestry. It is ancestry from people who lived where they lived during the previous Mesolithic period. And the CHG ancestry can be seen as their foreign ancestry. It's, it's ancestry from Mesolithic people who lived in a foreign region. Here are the percentages of EHG ancestry in the, in the DNA samples in the Pontic Steppe from the Neolithic era. The uh, Dnieper and Volga sites had 100% EHG because, like I said before, they had no CHG admixture. So when you when they have no CHG admixture, all that's left is EHG. So they had 100% EHG. And the Neolithic site of the Don, they had 75% EHG ancestry. Now let's compare this to the levels of EHG ancestry in later Neolithic steppe populations. The site of the Piedmont had 50%. The Havalans culture had 75%, the Cerny Stog culture, 65%, and the Yamnaya culture, 57%. No Neolithic steppe population is 100% EHG because, uh, like I said, all of them had a significant amount of CHG admixture. But anyways, let's move on. The next thing to discuss are the Y haplogroups present in the Neolithic steppe. There are three Y haplogroups present in the Neolithic steppe. Haplogroup R1B1, haplogroup R1A1, and haplogroup I2A. All three of these haplogroups are of Mesolithic European origin. They derive from people who lived in Europe in the previous Mesolithic period. We know this because we have many examples of all three of these haplogroups from DNA samples in Europe from the Mesolithic period. So yeah, there's no doubt that the Neolith these Neolithic steppe people inherited these three haplogroups from previous Mesolithic Europeans. In other words, they get these haplogroups from their EHG side of ancestry. The site of the Don River, of course, had CHG uh, Middle Eastern admixture, but none of their Y haplogroups came from their CHG side of ancestry. And we see this, uh, it's interesting, we see this same trend in later steppe people of the Neolithic period. Like the Don site, the Neolithic Don site, they all had a significant amount of CHG Middle Eastern admixture, but basically none of them have CHG Y DNA. Uh, the Piedmont site, which is does not have a is not assigned to a specific culture, they belong to have the group R1B1. The Havalans culture, they belong mainly to R1B1 and Q1, and the Yamnaya culture were basically 100% R1B1, as as you should know. Out of all the Y DNA samples we have from the Neolithic staff, only one belongs to a CHG Y haplogroup, and it comes from the Havalans culture. But it's just one sample out of all of our samples on the step from the Neolithic period. And by the way, that CHG Y haplogroup is J1. Uh, some of you guys who study DNA should be familiar with it. In case you don't know, Y haplogroups are the DNA expression of male lineages. They are passed down by male ancestors. So the fact that there's basically no CHG Y haplogroups in step people means they don't have CHG male ancestors. That could be. That could be why they don't have CHG Y haplogroups. It's possible that most of their CHG ancestors were women which would be an interesting factoid and also hard to explain how that could happen. 